Hi, I'm Emma with Duke iGym 2017, and I'm here with you guys today to talk about the Golden Gate Assembly. So this is going to be the first part of a two-part video series. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about what the basics of the Golden Gate Assembly are. So I'm going to be focusing on what the Golden Gate Assembly is, why you would use it, and the different parts of the Golden Gate Assembly. And then next time I'll be talking about how to begin um, your Golden Gate Assembly plan, um, what to make sure that you have, um, designing your primers and how to get everything going, um, to make sure that you have the correct construct, um, checking your work and doing any redesign, and then um, finally moving on to your final construct. Um, and so with that, let's get started. So for our Golden Gate Assembly, what is a Golden Gate Assembly? If you've never heard of this term, it's good to review what it is. So the Golden Gate Assembly is a method of cloning um, instead of using um, inserts and adding each insert to the other. This is a way of combining inserts to make one construct. Um, the nice thing about this um, is that it uses a single type of type 2 restriction enzymes. So the easy thing about this is that you're actually able to put in several different inserts into one backbone and one step with the same enzyme. So you don't need to design several different restriction enzyme cut sites to your inserts and plasmids. You can just use one. Um, and because we're only using this single restriction enzyme, it makes cloning several inserts easier because again, you don't have to take each individual insert and add it to the next one before adding all of them into your final backbone. And around 7 to 10 inserts can be added reliably using this method of cloning. Um, so it's a really easy tool to use, especially if you can get it to work correctly for you um, with all of the primers and things. And it makes um, life a lot easier. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about today is why we use the Golden Gate Assembly. So this is important because, you know, Sometimes the Golden Gate Assembly doesn't work for all applications, but when it is the right tool for the job, it's a really good tool to have. So for using this, we use a one pot, one step method. At least that's the way most Golden Gates are set up. And so the reason that you use a Golden Gate Assembly is to utilize this one pot, one step idea. And it simplifies the cloning process when you're working with several inserts. And so here I have a basic map of an experiment that um, I'm actually designing. And basically what I do is I do a Q5 mutagenesis to add linkers and cut sites to each of my different monomers. And then I'm going to do a sequence confirmation to make sure that I have the correct linkers. But then instead of having to put this attached to this, I can actually add both of these along with two other inserts into one epi tube and get it to work correctly and actually bind into one big um, construct. So it just simplifies a lot of the cloning steps. Um, instead of having several cloning steps in here, it's just one, and then I can sequence confirm the final construct. And again, you can do between seven to 10 um, inserts reliably. Um, for an experiment that I'm doing currently, I'm only using four. Um, you can use as little as two, um, but you can do up to 10, which makes this a really powerful cloning tool. So finally, we're going to talk about the parts of the Golden Gate Assembly. So I've been talking about this, but I haven't really gone over what it includes. So the first part of the Golden Gate Assembly is the backbone. And so the backbone is important because it's what you're actually going to put all of your inserts into. Most backbones that you find in a Golden Gate Assembly uses a LAC-Z um, gene in them. And this allows you to use um, a blue-white selection tool at the end of the cloning process. Um, so what that does is anything that um, is blue at the end is just a re-ligated backbone, but anything that is white um, is the backbone with your inserts inside of it. So it makes sure that you don't have any re-ligation of your backbone. The way the Golden Gate works is that you cut the restriction sites, and through many cycles you, you cut the site and then you repair it. So you want to make sure that you're accounting for a way to screen the colonies that have a re-ligated backbone. Um, now, it is possible to create a Golden Gate Assembly without a LAC-Z gene, um, but it helps with the cloning and the screening process, and it greatly reduces the number of colonies uh, that you have to screen at the end if you 
um, include the Lexi um, gene in your backbone. So the next piece is the inserts. So the inserts that you have, um, again, you can use seven to 10 inserts. Um, and if you require a specific order, you can actually include sequences in between each insert um, to be used as a linking sequence. So currently, um, I'm using a three amino acid linking se sequence, and so I'm using those linking sequences to create a specific order that my plasma that my inserts are going to be in when I make my final construct. Um, one important note about the inserts is that your promoter and RBS sites need to be included on the first insert and your terminator needs to be included on the last insert. Um, you want to make sure that you don't forget to include these um, and a lot of times they're not included on your plasmid backbone. So you want to make sure that when you're cutting out the Lexi that you're actually replacing the, your promoter and RBS site to something that you want. And then finally, probably the most important part of this entire process is your restriction enzyme. And so this enzyme needs to be chosen very carefully because you don't want any accidental cutting. So you need to check your backbone as well as your insert um, for any um, accidental cutting sites. Um, and once you have a pretty good enzyme that you've chosen, you need to make sure that that restriction site is added to both the beginning and the end of your inserts um, and that it's cutting your um, overhangs in the right spot and that your overhangs will match. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in part two of this series. Um, so again, those cut sites need to be um, made sure that they're correct and that they're also in the correct order so that you can maintain that specific order if you want it. Um, and the one cool thing about this is that we're using the same restriction site and the same enzyme on every single piece of the assembly, which allows us to simplify the cloning process. Um, if you choose multiple enzymes, um, then the Golden Gate really doesn't do you any good and you're still going to have as many cloning steps as you would if you didn't use the Golden Gate assembly. Um, so that is it for part one of this video series. Um, basics of what the Golden Gate Assembly is. Um, next time we are going to be looking at um, how to begin your Golden Gate Assembly, um, what to make sure that you have, as well as designing your primers, checking your work, and doing a redesign if need be. Um, so with that, that is all for today, and I'll see you guys next time on part two of the Golden Gate Assembly series.